This is Low Vision Moments, the podcast all about those sometimes frustrating, potentially embarrassing, but often pretty comical things that happen when you are just going about your day with blindness, visual impairment, or albinism. I am your ho-ho host, Get your minds out of the gutter, listeners. And this is the holiday season. It is upon us. So we are getting festive around here for this episode number 25. If you don't have some fire claw. No, Bethany, those are Christmas lights. In my house, we do Christmas this time of year. So this episode is going to be part one of the 12 low vision moments of Christmas. And as a special treat, we're going to drop two episodes in December. We're going to have part two of the 12 low vision moments of Christmas dropping on Friday, December 23rd. So you're not going to want to miss the second part. Well, I'm not a religious person, Christmas has always been the biggest holiday in my family, and I love a good get-together, I love the food, I love the drinks, the joyous atmosphere, everyone's having fun, and the baking, and yeah, I'll admit it, I love getting presents. I like it. Who doesn't like getting presents? And my guest this time is, I have to say, an early holiday gift. She is a spectacularly talented vocalist, cabaret artist, and advocate. This guest has been singing professionally with great success since the age of 12. They advocate for access and opportunities in the arts, and they encourage others of all ages through music. Marlena Barber, thank you so much for coming on Low Vision Moments. It's so fun to be here, Jenny. Thanks so much for asking me to to join you. I love the holidays, so this is going to be fun. I knew you were the right choice. Uh, I've been following you on Instagram for a couple of years now, and you seem to just you, you do holidays, you do them justice. So I'm really excited to what else do you want the people to know about you? Well, you're definitely right about loving the holidays. Um, and I think part of that is I have I'm a mom of two, two girls, they're 11. And eight and it's definitely fun to celebrate the holidays with them i do all the fun things with them the elf on the shelf visits our house and all of that oh no i love to bake (laughs) oh i know it's a lot (laughs) i love to bake um and yeah as you mentioned i am a vocalist and so um singing during the holidays is a real a real big part of my experience um and i actually start the week before Thanksgiving. That's how early um, I'm starting all of the holiday music. So I'm kind of celebrating for like two full months. <laughs> That's a lot. But I like Christmas. Yeah. And we should clarify, you're referencing American Thanksgiving. Oh, that's that's correct. Yes, I, I live in California in the United States. So I am talking about the the November Thanksgiving that we celebrate here in the States. Now, there will be a little bit of singing perhaps here today. Not so much on my (laughs) part. Nobody wants that. But before we get going and into all of that, I wanted to take a second to describe what we've got going on with our wardrobes and our backgrounds because you're all about it. Tell us what you have going on back there. Okay, well, I put up some uh, red... And white striped, sort of like a candy cane wrapping paper. And I have a, I love this. This is a, um, one of those jumpers and it's a little Santa, little Santa looking uh, red velvet with the white fur on the top. Um, a little snowflake necklace. So yeah, I'm all, oh, there, there are also bells on here, but I, I did mute them because I didn't (laughs) want to be making noise during our our conversation you look like you look so official like you look like you're in uniform ready to go work at the north north pole it is awesome thank you and let me say red is our color we have you know similar hair and skin tone and all that so um, i agree i love wearing red yeah it is our color um thank you for for dressing up and decorating for the occasion absolutely On my end, I am wearing a Santa hat. Let's not forget about that. It is chilly in here, so it's actually it's actually kind of practical. It's keeping me toasty. I got some red lipstick on, very red. Hopefully, there's not too much on my teeth um, to go with the very red Santa hat. And I have a little dress on. It's got gingerbread people and candy canes on it. I love it. 
thank you and some hearts and I may or may not have purchased it from it may or may not be like a youth large that I have squeezed into um in my background I've got a lot going on back there as usual but I'll tell you some highlights I've got a really cute star that's lit up let me see if we can get it on camera there we go so I got a little star lit up in behind me there I've got a wreath that I put together up top it's got a couple star warships I've got a tie fighter on there made that one myself and we've got a santa who's wearing an ami baseball hat so plenty more things i could point out but that's a little bit to set the stage for our, our viewers and listeners here today so let's get to it the 12 low vision moments of christmas i'm I, i'm not gonna sing it's not gonna go well <laughs> just do it you could do it you could do it i'm nervous now that you're here <laughs> No okay. judgment, no judgment. On the first day of Christmas, my nephew gave to me a giant deck of playing cards. And I'm going to elaborate. So my nephew gave me a giant deck of playing cards. And when I say giant, I think they're actually called jumbo on the package. They are like a foot tall. They are not exactly practical. I have the Joker um, oh, appropriately my goodness. <laughs> representing oh. me. I have it in my hand. It's literally larger than my head. I swear they're like a foot tall. And what was so funny about this was, and I don't recall if it was before he gave me the gift or after I opened it, but he was really nervous that I was going to be offended. He was oh. like, my aunt's got a great sense of humor, but is this over the line? Is this too much? And you know what? I could see maybe someone else, but not not me. I had a blast with this gift. And as I said, they're really not practical. Like these cards are so big, you can barely hold one like one. I was just in gonna say, hand. how are you gonna hold a hand? <laughs> we're we're they're not designed for playing games. I don't know, you know, maybe like solitaire spread out on the floor or something, but you can bet your keister that the night I got these, we had a group of people over, it was a game night, and we were exchanging gifts. I insisted that we play Texas Hold'em with these cards. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was ridiculous. Um, everybody had, everyone was dropping the cards all over the place. <laughs> there was not enough room on the table for the spread when you play Hold'em. And I don't know if he maybe after that regretted getting me these this kind of gag gift, but these are the jumbo playing cards. And these are not the kind of playing cards that... I would play with. I would like prefer a large print set. Oh my gosh, Jenny, <laughs> look at that. That They're is enormous. Huge. Uh, so the first day of Christmas, my nephew gave to me a giant deck of playing cards. Okay. And I, we all have awkward gift giving moments. What's yours? Okay. Well, first, I think that that was very thoughtful of him. <laughs> it yes. Was, it was very cute. Okay. So, on the second day of Christmas, my parents gave to me Kelly Clarkson tickets. Okay. <laughs> Kelly Clarkson tickets. You're thinking, oh, this is, this is great. Way well, better. Is how I found out about these tickets. So, usually when I receive a greeting card, birthday card, um, they're hard to see, right? I mean, usually the print and the card is, is kind of small. Uh, when anyone writes a personal handwritten message, it's even more difficult sometimes to read handwriting. And, and it doesn't Next even, to impossible. And it doesn't even matter if they try to write large. Sometimes just people's handwriting is just hard to, to see it. So um, if I don't have my low vision aids around or my, my, re my reading glasses, what I'll normally do is I'll just kind of set it aside and I'll say, oh, thank you so much. I'll read your personal message later. Well, here it is, Christmas morning. Um, this was actually a few years ago. Um, we do Christmas with my my kids here at home, and then we would go over to my parents. So we're having Christmas with them, and my parents still give me a stocking, which I love. I love all the little trinkets and things in the stocking. And there's a card in there, so I open the card, and I kind of skim over the the writing in the card, and then I see that there's a written handwritten message, and I do what I normally do. I just kind of put it away and plan to read it at another time. And all of a sudden there's this awkward silence and I'm like, 
And my, my mom says to me, well, did you read the card? And I said, oh, well, I'll, I'll read the personal message later. And um, she's like, no, you, the presence in the card, you need to read the card. So then I open up the card and, I, and I'm like squinting and reading, oh, you have tickets to Kelly Clarkson in Las Vegas. <laughs> and I'm like, I was so excited because I personally love Kelly Clarkson. I was very excited to get those tickets. But I sort of killed the moment with that low vision moment. And I felt a little bad because, you know, it wasn't as, you know, exciting as I think my mom was hoping it would, the moment would be. So, yeah, that's that's the Kelly Clarkson moment. Oh, my goodness. I think <laughs> so many of us do that with with low vision Um or, you know, or if you're blind, you're, you're, you're going to set it aside for later. Yes. And, and it's, it's, we always come back to, we often come back to this on the podcast and it's like, mom, dad, maybe should, should understand what's going on. And, and, but the thought again, like the thought is there and, and the consideration is there and it's such a lovely gift, but I can, yeah, I can totally, I can totally see that happening to me. I do the exact same thing. I, and in fact, I pretend to read the card, like get a glance at it for a minute, skim over it. And then I do genuinely take the time to come back and read it later. Right. Yes. I, I definitely do too, because you know, usually those handwritten messages are, are very personal and they're nice and I definitely want to read them, but it's like, it's just, you're kind of in like put on the spot exactly the, the pressure in the moment to try to read it and what if you can't really read it <laughs> so. but you were able to make it out so yeah that's the, that's a bonus in that moment and 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 I think you probably salvaged the moment right because then you were pretty excited oh yes absolutely Oh my yeah. God, that's great. And I bet the concert was really good. Oh, well, it actually ended up being canceled due to COVID. Oh, I didn't want to hear that. Sorry about I'm that. Sorry. <laughs> we could sorry cut that out. <laughs> yeah, let's just cut that part out. Cut that the concert part. was great. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> oh my. Okay, so the awkward gift giving moments continue here. Okay. I'm going to continue with the third day of Christmas. On the third day of Christmas, my sister gave to me an origami gift set. Okay. I can only speak for myself, but origami gift set turned out to be... Okay, let me let me start. Let me backtrack a little bit. I'm a, I'm a pretty crafty, creative person. I received this gift many years ago from my sister the the again the thought the good intention was there she knows i'm crafty i like to try new things the paper was beautiful okay the paper was was unique patterns and ge cool geometric shapes very colorful very me floral all different kinds of beautiful paper and with it came this guide of how to do really basic origami and then there was a second guide that actually was like a little bit more advanced so you, you know once you did the first one you moved on to the second one when I first got this gift I actually thought it was really cool and I was like really excited to give it a try but then once I did it it was one of those things where as a low vision person I'm like I go into it gung-ho excited and then I and then I'm super disappointed because it, <laughs> it turns out to be not accessible at all and I ended up and it, it really unfortunately ended up being the, like one of the least low vision friendly gifts I ever had but I kept it for years because I kept trying to go back to it Marlena yeah. <laughs> I wanted it to work so bad it's so frustrating like when you want to do it <laughs> you're like trying to read I really just wanted to make a crane and it and <laughs> you would fold the paper and and you get I'd get a couple of folds in and then it just became too visually busy. Yeah. Especially with the pattern paper. Maybe if it was more solid paper it might be easier, but I don't know. I don't think it's for me. I try I kept it for years and years because I felt bad. I didn't you don't want to throw a gift out. And I don't think I've ever told her. But it was it was yeah. one of those awkward things where it wasn't awkward in the moment, but it right. I was <laughs> It's yes. like, I'm she's gonna like, do this. How is that origami going? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you liking your origami set? Yeah, it's great. 
great. Yeah, I've given it a try a couple times. I've spent a couple minutes on it. Meanwhile, like half of the time it ended in tears, just in frustration. Like, oh, well, here's another fucking hobby I can't do. Um, I know you need to do is find a YouTube video so you can make those cranes and then you can give her a crane. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a like a low vision answer, but it, it yeah. did not turn out to be a low vision friendly gift at all. But the yeah. giant playing cards, I, those those live on my gaming shelf. So yeah. I might break those out again this year for Texas Hold'em. <laughs> love it. Uh, love it. Now, something else I love to do is bake and at the holidays is it like a prime time to bake because then I have a great excuse to give it away to people and I don't have to worry about being it being in the house and me eating it all and taking in too much sugar um so I think you mentioned that you like baking with your kiddos during the holidays yes I love to bake and you're right like the holidays are a great time to be able to give away a lot of the goodies so that they're not hanging around the house um and actually my fourth day of low vision Christmas moments or holiday moments um, is, sh shall I try to sing this one? Let's see. On the fourth day of Christmas, my kitchen gave to me disappearing cookie cutters. <laughs> All I right. love it. The disappearing cookie cutter story. So I have to preface this by saying that when we moved into our house, uh, we completely gutted the kitchen because um, the kitchen was super old and run down. And so we put our efforts towards redoing the kitchen. And I thought, wow, this is an opportunity for me to have um, like an accessible, high contrast kitchen. So we purposely had uh, white cabinets and drawers put in and a black granite countertop that has like a little bit of like a little silver speckling in it. Okay, so I'm thinking, all right, this black countertop is going to be great. I'll be able to see things on it. Well, turns out that black countertop <laughs> has caused a lot of problems <laughs> than, uh, more than, than helping me because, one, all of our devices, like our phones and tablets, are black. So whenever I put them on the countertop, they disappear. And then, like, whenever I spill things, especially water, um, it just it's really hard to see spills. So I'm, I'm kind of have this love hate relationship with this countertop. Well, uh, last year I was making gingerbread cookies and you know, the old school way where you roll out the dough and you cut it out with the cookie cutters. And I put the flour all over the countertop. And then, you know, at some point you get flour on the cookie cutters too, because you have to flour them as well. So and they don't stick, right? Exactly. So as any good baker would know. <laughs> so then at one point I'm like looking for the cookie cutters to do like the second round of, of my batch. And, um, I cannot find these cookie cutters. Like the, I, I'm like literally having to like pat down, pat my hands all over the countertop because I cannot find them. Um, because the flowered tin cookie cutters just blended in with, um, the flower. They just camouflage oh, on this completely. counter. Completely. And I, I have a photo that we'll share for the YouTube viewers yes. that will be able to see. And there are, I think there are about five cookie cutters on that countertop. Um, and I remember posting this photo in like an albinism uh, social media group uh, and I said like <laughs> like low vision holiday edition try to find the cookie cutters and even just like in the photo you can't even find them it's pretty I, it you sent me the photo so let yeah. let's put it up for a second but you sent me this photo and and I legitimately could not see any yeah. cookie cutters whatsoever you're totally right when you say that it is camouflage it's yeah. It, it's a really good idea. I love the idea of a high contrast kitchen. When I get to redo mine one day, I'll do a similar thing and have, and I don't know if a dark, I feel like a dark countertop, generally speaking, would be more accessible to what find. I thought. Right? It's to what find I things. Yeah. But, but, 
you, you yours has like the it's got like some like the texture like marbling almost kind of thing going on yes and I can I lose stuff on my counter all the time it's a completely different color it's like a it's like a brown speckly thing mm -hmm. and I'm losing stuff on that all the time so in terms of the, the feeling around to find things me it's the little thing that closes that you put on the bread bag to close it oh yes yes the little tabs or the mm -hmm. little twisty yeah yeah and oh, you can take sure. a mental note of where you put it down it doesn't it doesn't matter it still disappears <laughs> <laughs> that's I kind know. of mean that you <laughs> you put it up on the albinism i know <laughs> well, well you know i just thought people would get a kick out of it like yeah, just, yeah. can you like can you find these because this is this is what's happening right now in in my kitchen i had to but. zoom in and scan left to right left to right to, yeah. to find anything so yeah oh i feel for you i feel for yeah. you i actually ended up like calling one of my girls in to help me out. I'm like, can you just like take these cookie cutters, put them in like one area. So what we ended up doing was, um, I got like a colored plate, like a red plate yes. and I put it on the side. And then after I was done with the cookie cutter, I put it over there. That way it was a different color. They showed up better. So I knew know, I didn't need to suggest solve. that. I was like, she, she figured out a solution. We problem solve, right? We do yeah. that every day. <laughs> yeah. It's the name of the game. Yes. Oh, geez. So all of our all of our low vision moments of Christmas so far have been um, sort of sort of th there have been other people involved in the last one. You brought you brought your girls in to give you a hand. So you, you had to yeah. tell someone my, my next one. I didn't have to tell anyone about this. This one's okay. this one's pretty embarrassing. Um, oh, boy. Having having shared it, I could have just kept it to myself. One of my um, one of my favorite Christmas movies is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yes. Uh, along with Die Hard. I've got I've got both of them <laughs> up on display on my shelf here somewhere. Yes. And and so in in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, there is a joke that I'm not sure if it's a low vision joke, like a vision loss joke or a joke about getting older, but I used to think I watch it every year at Christmas time. And I used to think that's the dumbest thing. As a, as a visually impaired person, I was like, that's kind of offensive. That's a stupid friggin' joke. Why would you keep that in there? And then it happened to me. It actually, so, <laughs> so here we go. On the fifth day of Christmas, my neighborhood gave to me a house on fire. Don't worry, it wasn't really on fire. Let me explain. So I'm, I believe I was actually going to do some Christmas shopping dead of winter, December. I live really close to a lot of places where I can walk to, to get my errands and shopping done. I did that on purpose. Yes, um, me too. Right? Very smart. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking to the mall and in a great mood, da -da -da, I'm going to get some money in my pocket, going to go Christmas shopping. And then in the distance, I see what I think is fire. And, you know, being low vision, I question myself all the time. I'm always like, am I really seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> and it's this house is all aglow. It's it's and it's not multicolored holiday lights. It's not, you know, the classic um, tall plastic candles, red, big red candle with the with the flame. It's nothing like that. It's just this big, beautiful house that is all aglow from a distance and I'm like it looks like it's on fire like there's a fire down there and it's at oh a distance gosh. so I'm like hmm let me get closer to investigate because I don't smell anything I don't mm -hmm. smell any flames but it really um first second third fifth glance I thought this house was on fire until I got closer I got about mm, I don't know three four houses away and I'm like oh god I just had an Aunt Bethany moment in yeah. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Aunt Bethany says something like, Clark, is your house on fire? <laughs> I had an Aunt Bethany moment. And in the, <laughs> I didn't have to tell anybody that, but I had to tell my husband because we watch it together every single year. Oh, my gosh. Oh and my now gosh. I'm like, I've totally changed my tune. I don't think it's a stupid joke at all. I'm like, whoever wrote that joke for Aunt Bethany, they knew what they were doing. They either 
know someone who's blind or visually impaired or I don't know, or maybe mm-hmm. they have some personal experience because it was pretty bang on once it oh happened to gosh. me. That is so funny. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. And I'm just opt- glad it wasn't on fire. Yeah. Oh no, for sure, for sure. But yeah, that's that's those those moments where you think you see something and you're not quite sure if it is or not. Yeah, those happen. This happen often. We have a whole episode about that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll yeah. listen to that. Oh gosh. So we're nearing the end of our days of Christmas. Uh, I don't know how we got here so quickly, but here we are. Um, I think we're going to continue with, with the shopping aspect. And I could get into a whole thing about how much I hate shopping with low vision. But oh. let's keep it positive. <laughs> let's keep it light. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, let's see. So, okay. On the sixth day, let me, let me see if I'm going to sing this. Okay. On the sixth day of Christmas, the cashier gave to me an awkward shopping checkout. (laughs) All right. (laughs) So here's my, here's my awkward shopping checkout. So during the holidays, it is very busy. As you know, at the stores, there's, um, there's, they, if they're able to, they, they staff, uh, the store pretty well with lots of checkouts, lots of cashiers. So there's like a whole line of registers open and a long line of customers waiting. Um, and I have found that it is, it's really difficult to know when a cashier is open in like those long line, that, that long line of, um, of registers. So, um, my awkward moment was, you know, I'm standing in line and I'm just like having that anxiety of like, when is the next register going to open? I'm like the the next in line, yep. right? I'm like, okay. And you don't want to be holding up the people behind you, right? Exactly. And I'm like crossing my fingers. Please let it be like the one right in front of me, you know, please let it be just like the, like the ones yep. that are really close to me because I cannot see down, down, clear down the line. Um, so of course, uh, <laughs> this moment, it was like the very last register. Right. And I didn't see it. And the lady behind me's like, you know, of course she, she sounds all put out. Like I am really holding up everybody. And she's like, they're open at register one. Oh my and god, I'm, like, I'm so inconvenienced right now. Sorry. Gosh. So I'm like, oh, 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 I'm, I'm so sorry, or whatever. And then you're like, but then it kind of continues where you're like, walking down the longest Is line of register. Is, Is it this one? one? Is, Is it, it that the, one? Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this one was number one, so I'm thinking of, you know, using my reasoning here, it's probably the very last one, right. but. I mean, other times when that's happened, you're like, okay, which one is it? And you're just like, and then sometimes they call you when the other person hasn't completely left. So you're like wondering, have they left? Is it this one? Oh my gosh. It's just, it's, it's a lot. It's like a lot of stressful panic. It is. It It can be. I have noticed that, um, there are certain stores here in the U S, um, I think it's like TJ Maxx, Burlington Coat Factory. They have started to have like a big screen yeah. and an announce, uh, like an automatic uh, uh, electronic announcer that yes. will say the number, you know, like register fives open, right? And they even have like a nice big number lit up. So yeah. I've noticed those stores are really visually impaired friendly for me. Uh, but it's those other times where you're just like, Oh, it's just like an awkward trying to figure out which register to go to and then, you know, holding up everyone else. It's, and... God, it shouldn't be so painful, right? Just just to like, I just want to spend my money, like take <laughs> my money. But I, uh, no, I think that's so, so relatable. Um, and, and I will say that th- that helps, you know, having the announcement and then having the sign, like the big signage, that, that does help. Provided the signage isn't up, too too high because some sometimes then I'm, I'm looking up and I'm pushing my cart full of stuff and I'm already having a hard time yeah. banging into stuff with <laughs> sure. my cart so I'm looking up like really really looking up and pushing my cart and praying I don't bump into anybody but that happens to me and I don't know if I get 
I don't I don't really get the anxiety or the worry so much anymore. I think okay. and I think for me it's Good because for you. <laughs> well 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 let me let me let me elaborate. It's because okay. I go to, I go to the same places all the time. So I'm like, mm. I don't care. Like <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't care. I'm here all the time and you get you get a little bit more comfortable. But I had one recently where it was kind of the opposite where I went to do you have a lot of the self checkout stuff in the US? Yes. Yes. So where I go get my groceries, we have self-checkout and I showed up one evening and it was pretty quiet. So they had a they had a bunch of them open the self-serve mm-hmm. checkout. Yeah, so yeah. I get to the front of the line and the, and the staff person's like, oh, you can just go to any of them. And I'm like, oh, perfect. This is easy for once. And yeah. don't don't I pull up to the one closed. <laughs> oh, I know you can never tell. <laughs> I can never, I mean, I know some of them have like a little green light or a red light if they're open. It had the light, but it's high. Again, it was high up. So I was like, oh, they're all open. Right. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I'm just going to go straight to the one that's right ahead of me. (laughs) Didn't I pick the wrong one? And, and, and that was, and in that moment I was like, oh God, I'm in like, how embarrassing. Yeah. But my personality is just like, I'm just going to laugh at myself and I'm going to look at the clerk and be like, ha ha. I went to the wrong, the one right. that was closed. Let's right. all have a yeah. laugh. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it depends on the day, right? And I say that a lot. Like, it sure. depends on the day. If there were people behind me being jerks, I might have got a little bit more flustered, right? Mm. So, yeah, 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 for sure. It's all about the situation. <laughs> oh, so we've come to the end of our installment of the, the, the six, the first six low vision moments of Christmas. Do we want, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Do, do we want to try to sing the song? Do we want to okay. try to sing them back? I, I think we, we can, we can try. We can try to do this. Should, should we, or should you, the professional? Oh Cause I'm, a, I'm a professional at nothing. Let's okay. Tr- let's try. Okay. You want to count okay. us in? Okay. So we're going to go backwards, right? We're going to yeah. start from six. Okay. Let's try it. Okay. Ready? One, two, three, four. On, On the six. six. No, it's not going to work. You do it. <laughs> okay, I'll give I'll give it a try. And we'll see if it works okay. or not. And then we might be cutting this. We'll, we'll cut it depending on how it goes. <laughs> okay, here we go. On the sixth day of Christmas, low vision moments gave to me cash your awkward moment. Uh, what was five shoot? <laughs> five wait, wait. houses on fire. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, here, I got it. Let's... I'm going to do it. I got it. I no, got it. I got it. I, got... I can do mine and you can do yours. Do you want to do it like okay. that? Okay. Okay. Okay, let's start again. All right. Mark, make us look like we know what we're doing. We're going to start now. Not that other false start. <laughs> okay, here we go. On the sixth day of Christmas, low vision moments gave to me. Awkward cashier checkout. <laughs> <laughs> on the fifth day of christmas my neighborhood gave to me five houses on fire oh my god that was awful no wait 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 so when you when we when you oh normally i do... forgot yours oh geez. no 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 when you normally do the the countdown yes you don't need to sing the on the you just do like i know and i but i should have said yours okay third time's the charm let's try again oh no 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 you got it okay so do you want me to start a little lower? On no. The... no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get in our range here. We're trying I don't. To... <laughs> I don't. I don't even know what that means. No, I'm just kidding. You're so funny. You know. You're. <laughs> you got a good singing voice. You've got this. Okay. On the sixth day of Christmas, low vision moments gave to me awkward shopping checkout. <laughs> Disappearing cookie cutters, three origami sets, two Kelly Clarkson concert tickets, and a deck of huge cards. Oh yes! <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm. I think that was a lot less painful for everyone having the professional do it. Uh, my my guest for the second part of this, they're totally on the hook to do the singing as well. So I'm gonna have to let them know. <laughs> that's how that's gonna shake out 
<laughs> that would be fun. Oh, oh, Marlena, I can't thank you enough for being a guest on the show, sharing, giving us the gift of your presence. See what I did there? Oh, oh I see. Thank you so much, Jenny. This was fun. I really enjoy chatting with you. You're hilarious. I love listening to you. And um, yeah, this was fun. So I appreciate the invitation. Now, I need to tell you before we go, I don't use the term role model often. But when I discovered you and your music years and years ago, I think I stumbled upon a music video online. I was much more insecure in who I was at the time. And seeing you this successful, radiant, lovely human being, I was like, holy cow, this person with albinism is so lovely. Maybe there's hope for me, you know, and it really, Aww, I think that you do that for a lot of people. And no, I thank just, you so much. thank you for sharing everything that you do. I just think you're an awesome human being. And I oh, need to, gosh. we need to tell other people, how can they find you? How can they hear your lovely music and connect with you? Oh, well, first of all, thank you so much. That, that really was very kind of you to say, <laughs> like, um, I, um, yeah, I, I'm a cabaret singer, as you had mentioned before. So I have a one woman show that I do that's about my life growing up with albinism. And I kind of talk about some of those low vision moments too, but, but also just kind of having to um, deal with adversity on a daily basis and, and in my, my pursuit to be a performer and how, um, how that's, how albinism has played a role in that. Um, and so I am on Instagram. I post a lot about my kids and my family and my baking and all of that in addition to music. Um, and that's just um, Marlena Barber on Instagram. And the same thing, if you're on Facebook, um, I have a music page you can follow, Marlena Barber. And then um, I also have a website, which um, has a little bit more. You can like listen to some of my music. Um, there and that's marlenabarber.com so it's marlena with two e's m-a-r-l-e-e-n-a -E 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 and then barber like the haircut so um <laughs> yeah that's how i describe my my thing but yes i i i appreciate um you so much jenny and i think that what you're doing is so fun and so great to just you know you're educating people about low vision in such a fun way and that you know an opportunity for us to kind of laugh at ourselves a little bit and um you know it is what it is right <laughs> sometimes so you got to work with what you got i find myself saying that on a daily basis yeah yeah well happy holidays to you i look forward yes. to seeing all your baking and and maybe even elf on the shelf sometimes those are a little bit entertaining if you post those yeah. online yes yes you too jenny thanks so much all right. Well, if that didn't put you in the festive holiday spirit, I don't know what possibly could. Thank you so much again, Marlena, especially for taking on the singing duties. I don't know what we're going to do with the next episode because I know that I can't sing. Want to be a guest on the podcast or have you got an idea for an episode? I would love to hear from you. Send an email to podcast at ami.ca or get in touch by leaving a voicemail at one 866 509-4545 once more that phone number 1-866-509-4545 just make sure to mention low vision moments in the message please and thanks come and follow me on instagram we can connect there i'm under uber blonde four that's u-b-e-r-b-l-o-n-d-e -E, and the number four mark aflalo is our technical producer and he is definitely on my nice list Thanks to manager at AMI-audio, Andy Frank, even though he is a self-proclaimed Grinch. Until next time, anybody want an origami set? Because I've got one.